today I want to show you how I made this box over here. This is a box I made uh, today and I made it out of maple and walnut. And the reason why I made this uh, video, it's not because YouTube needs another small box video tutorial. It's because I wanted to show you this router bit uh, that I was using, and this is bird's mouth router bit. It creates this really cool joinery like this, which is so much stronger than a miter joint, and you can make cool shape uh, boxes or you know whatever you want. But um, yeah, the, there's a little bit of lighter color over here if you look closely, and that's where I have a little bit of glue that I did not send it properly. And that is because some of you that have been following me for a while know that I had carpal tunnel surgery at both of my hands about three weeks ago. And my hands are still a little bit sore, so I try to do minimum sanding. This is not a box for, you know, sale or anything like that. This is just to show you how I did it and also to show you, you know, the router bit that I used. So again, let's give you, let me move out of the frame so the camera will focus on the box. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to show you step by step how I did it. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. To start our project, I will uh, use these two pieces of walnut over here and one thin strip of maple. The maple is three quarter inch by one and a half. The walnut, this is a uh, three quarter inch by four and a half. And this is three quarter inch by two and a quarter. So before I start cutting these pieces to size, I would like to give them a light sanding just because it's so much easier to sand when the pieces are larger than when they are into tiny pieces. We will have to do more sanding on the end when we have to remove all the you know glue squeeze out and stuff, but it's better to do the main part, the bulk of the sanding right now. <laughs> Now with the router table, I want to use a bird's mouth profile and I'm going to do that on both sides of the maple. If you're not familiar with the bird's mouth router profiles, they look something like this. And they come on, a, they're usually in set of trees. One of them makes a six and 12 sided shape. One makes an eight sided shape and one a 16. The 16 is great for making, you know, almost a full circle. For this project, we will be using the eight sided shape. And, uh, once we cut the profile, it's going to look something like this. And the way it works is you will take another piece of wood that does not have a um, burst mouth profile, just a straight 90 degrees. And this will fit in here, something like this. And then you see, we get this like really cool joint that is very, very strong because you have a lot of gluing surface over here. Now setting up this uh, router bit profile could be a little bit challenging. And once you get it right, after you work on a lot of scraps, piece of wood, I would suggest you keep one piece uh, with you. That way you can use it as a setup block for your next time you use the same diameter width of wood. Now, of course, I forgot to push the record button as I ran this board through the router, but I did run it the second time just to clean up the edges a little bit. So now this is the profile we got on a piece of maple. And as you can see, when you we add the walnut, let's see, like this, they're completely flush on this side, making a really, really clean edge. And then it fits perfectly into that, you know, groove. Now at the table saw, I set up a stop block and this stop block, it's about two and a half inches from my uh, curve of the blade, from the blade. And this measurement is gonna determine the height of our box. So I need to run all these pieces through the table saw and cut them all at the same uh, length, which will become the height. So all pieces are the same height. Uh, I will be needing four of these maple pieces. Um, I'll be needing two of the larger diameter uh, walnut and two of the thinner walnut. So let's go do that right now.
And now with all of our pieces cut, let's see how they come together. And then let's see how they will fit. Everything seems to go nicely and now it's time to apply the glue. For the glue up, I like to use these acid brushes. These are great for getting into all the nook and crannies of these uh, shapes. And you can buy this on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. I think they're like $17 for like 150 of them. I bought these ones to use them. We contact cement when I um, glue up um, leather lining inside of a box so this is what i bought it for but they're very very useful for the glue so let's get this box gluing Then of course I'll be using the wet wipes that I love and I showed you guys on every video I made. I use these guys all the time and we'll use this to, you know, remove some of the glue, squeeze out, make it easier for cleaning up later. And then I'll be applying some rubber bands to hold it in place. I'll also be applying one of these uh, band clamps just to make sure that it really stays in place. And now we set it aside. With the magic of YouTube, a few hours later, our box is dry and I already went ahead and sanded the outside and the inside a little bit to get rid of that glue squeeze out. And um, you can see we have really, really nice joints. Everything is matching perfectly and it's looking great. The only part I didn't do yet, as we can see here on the bottom, everything is flush and flat. But here we have a little bit of pieces that are just a half a millimeter proud. So I want to sand the top and the bottom to make sure this is completely flat. To do so, I use a three quarter inch piece of plywood, scrap plywood that I have left around. And on this side, I um, use some spray adhesive. I use this brand over here. And I stuck a piece of uh, sandpaper. This is 80 grit sandpaper. And then on the other side, I have uh, 120 grit sandpaper. And then I also glued a scrap of wood on this side and one on this side. That way it will fit in my vise and I don't have to clamp it to the table. And I'm going to take my box and just rub it on the sandpaper to make sure the top and the bottom, it's really flat. That's what we'll be doing next. If you're curious about my bench vise, I have a video on that um so go check that one out this is a vice i bought from amazon and it was really easy to install so i will start with the 80 grit sandpaper clamp it in and then do some sanding Our box is sanded and it looks something like that. Now it's time to think about adding a bottom and a lid to this box. And I thought, well, we got to do something a little bit special, but we don't want to go overboard with the details because there's a fine line between give it just enough detail and going overboard and making it look crummy. So what I did is I glued together two pieces of wood and this is maple and walnut. And I thought, how cool would it be if, you know, we'll make it a two-tone bottom like this. So you can see the white and then the dark walnut. If you do not have the ability of resawing lumber, like if you do not have a bandsaw and your table saw cannot cut that wide, 
Well, you can buy these pieces from Amazon. I buy mine like the Paduk. This is eight inch, two pieces of the eight inch Paduk. And then you can buy walnut and thin pieces like this, ash, maple, whatever. I'll put a link on this in the description below. And you get them like this, and then you don't have to resaw your lumber. You can just take your pieces and laminate them together. And I use this a lot for veneer. We'll do a video on veneers and some other video. So in order to make the bottom for this, I will be placing my box over here and trace it with a pencil around the perimeter. And then I'll cut it on the band saw and I'll cut it a little bit oversized and then I'll refine it uh, with a sanding block or maybe a flash trim bit on the router. Now I roughly cut this piece for the bottom and I will finesse it a little bit later after I glue it up. But now I need to cut another one and I have another piece of laminated. Uh, this one will be for the top. But before I glue the bottom in, I need to do something. I need to take a half inch piece of walnut and trace the inside of my box and cut it out. And this is going to be, um, Let's imagine this is the lid. If this is a lid, then the piece I will be cutting that will fit the inside of the box, like this, this piece is going to be glued to the top. And this is what is going to keep my lid in place. It's gonna be like a rabbit. So that half inch walnut is gonna sit on top of, inside of the box. And that's what, you know, it's gonna keep the lid together. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create this piece that goes inside from this half inch walnut. And then I will cut another one of these uh, pieces for the lid. Now on this piece of the lid, when I will mark it with a pencil, I'll be tracing the inside and the outside of my uh, lid, because that will show me where to put this piece when I need to glue it up together. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece into the bottom of the lid. So it's going to go, remember the pencil marks we made? That's where this is going to go. So I'm going to glue that in place like this. And then also I am going to glue the bottom of the box something like this. And then we'll, you know, finesse it later, we'll send it down. Now it's only been about 40 minutes since we did the glue up. It's not completely dry, but it's dry enough for us to finish the project. So, so far, this is what we're looking at. And now I'm going to use a router flash trim bit. This is my favorite one. It has two bearing bolts. And I'm gonna use this to, you know, make this uh, bottom flush with the box.
as you saw, I used the router with the flash tray bit to get the bottom and the top to be perfectly flushed with the box. And now this is the lid. I also send it in the inside of the glue squeeze out and stuff. So this would look like this on the box. Woof, that was a lot of dust. Now you can see when I send it the box, I still have a tiny little bit of gap there. That means the top of the box is not completely uh, flat. So in order to make it look better, like it was intentional, not like it was a mistake, I will use my tiny incy bincy hand plane and I will attempt to put a chamfer on this maple piece. So when it sits on the box, it looks like a shadow line. So that way it would look intentional, not like a mistake. Now this is where I would probably screw up my box because I am not great with hand planes, but I will attempt to do it and I will add that chamfer on the side. I could just use a chamfer a bit on the router, but I like to challenge myself, so I'll use a hand plane for this. Now for the lid, I just use a strip of maple that I had laying around and a strip of walnut. I created a dado onto this uh, maple and I put the walnut in it and then I'll cut it to size and it's going to be glued on top of my box. I'm not sure if it's going to be walnut down or maple down. I will see. But for now, I'm just going to go and attempt to put a chamfer with my hand plane, see if I can do it. All right, so we did it. Here is my small chamfer that I put on it. And now when the lid sits in the box, it has a shadow line and it looks intentional because it's even all around. So it doesn't look like a mistake. Nobody needs to know your mistakes. Here is what we have so far. This is our box. This is the lid. It looks nice. The pull is not straight because, well, I use CA glue. I didn't want to have to wait for the wood glue to dry. So I use CA glue and I put it in the wrong place and then there was no way to take it apart. It was glue there and it's solid so it's a little bit crooked but that's okay i was hoping you guys would not notice that for the finish i will be using osmo so this is what i'll be using let's put the finish see what it looks like when it's all done